so last uh, video, I believe we did buyouts, and I said something like, why? No, actually last video we did spikes. This video we're gonna do buyouts. Um, a spike is kind of the aftermath of a buyout. A buyout doesn't always work. Remember that one case where the guy was gonna buy like $10,000 of seances and then burn them, and then he wanted someone to go to uh, Channel Fireball to buy all their seances because they limited him. And he was going to pay in Bitcoin and he was like super serious about it. People were going to burn their seances to increase the price of a seance. Well, no matter how much people say seance is good, it's just not a good card. It's just not a good card. Um, so a buyout on seance is not going to work. Even if you pay people to burn seance, that's not going to work as proven by that one model. A person spent $10,000 apparently burning seances. The card itself has to be at least viable for a spike. So Olivia, a lot of people ask me, why did Olivia go up in price? She doesn't really see that much play. Well, she saw no play and was $5, and she saw a tiny bit of play, and she spiked to $15. I think it's very clear that when you look at Olivia, she's good. She is a very strong card. Um, there's no doubt in my So when I saw a voice of resurgence, and he, uh, he started at like $10, $12 pre-order, I said to myself, I've never seen a card this strong before. This card is probably like worth $30. Now, it actually ended up being worth like 50 bucks, but you know, I sold them a little too early. But I saw the card and I realized exactly how strong the card was. And that's the same with Olivia. Olivia, I look at her and I say, wow, um, she's a one card that can dominate an entire match depending on who she's matched up against. She can kill stuff, she can steal stuff, um, she can do all types of stuff. Um, very good. And when I looked at Liliana, Liliana used to be 20 bucks. The Snapcaster used to be even under 20 bucks. And you look at these two cards and you say to yourself, hmm, Liliana is very good, very strong. Maybe it doesn't have a deck, and Liliana for a very long time didn't have a deck in standard. So it was around $25 or $20 for a long, long time. Uh, and that's hard to believe now, but that's because she didn't have a home in standard. And Snap was, you know, a lot of Innistrad was open, a tremendous amount of Innistrad at that time. Uh, obviously much more cons and all that fun stuff was open. And I look at it and I have to say to myself, wow, Snapcaster is only going to get better in time. So when you have a buyout, it's, it's got to be on a card that is actually good. And the problem here for most buyouts is if a card is actually good, it's harder to buy it out because it costs more capital. And I don't know how many people can actually afford to buy out like a Snap at like 80 or a Lily at 100. But the buyouts are very bad because they prevent players from getting cards they need. And I'm not as, um, as I grow a little as I play the game more, I don't play the game, well I guess I play the game less. But as I play Magic um, and get a little older, I realize that like Magic is just a hobby. There's no real need to make money from it. Yes, you can trade and that's fun. But outside of trading for fun and uh, financing fun, because MTG Finance can be fun if, it's, if you're just doing it yourself and you're not at the scrutiny of other people. And um, it can be a ton of fun. Like I, I have a you know, a good deal of fast lands, which now actually I can trade it into something when I previously felt like it was a failed speculation. Uh, MTG Finance can be very fun. I just want to uh, advise treating it and buyouts as well. The capital for a buyout that you would need for an actually good card, massive, uh, massive capital. And I don't feel like that would be a good investment of anyone's time. And that actually hurts the player's base. Um, even the card goes down it'll still be higher due to your price memory. So overall, like why would you do that, right? Why would you do it? Bye guys.